All right, well, since I got the house to myself and I can actually tell this fucking story, I think I will. Um, so, where do I start? Okay, first of all, I want to start by saying that Alec is my homie. Love him to death. He's done nothing wrong to me. However, it is very unfortunate that he was raised by a complete and utter psychopath. I am talking about motherfucking Lisa, the head of the household that has completely treated me like dog shit and has been condescending to me, talks down to me, treats me like I'm some kind of fucking retarded child, and for some reason just fucking despises me. And I wish I could say, oh, I don't know why she doesn't like me, but I have a very good feeling. This time I'm actually going to say, oh, it's not for a reason. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure there's a good, you know, there's a good reason she's a fucking idiot. But anyway, so here we go. When I was living with cunt face number one or cunt face A, whichever way you want to look at it, we'll call her cunt face one and we'll call Lisa cunt face uh, A. So anyways, so cunt face number one, I couldn't last a week living with her because she and her fucking head has either some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder or she just doesn't like me. I don't know what it is, but like her and I's fucking personalities collide. She would just get mad at me for every little thing. I've I've already talked the story about this. So anyways, I couldn't last. So I simply asked my buddy Alec, I said, hey. Do you think I can crash on your guys' floor for about two days max, and then I'll find out where to go from there? And he said he would talk to his mom, which is cunt face uh, A. I'll say cunt A. There you go. So cunt A. So I finally have a talk with his mother, and I'm like, you know, hey, I just just need a weekend just to figure shit out because I literally have nowhere else to go for the moment. I can figure out where to go, but I just need this weekend to – Clear my head. Well, she started talking to me, and she was like, well, we can let you stay with us for a while just to, you know, till you get on your feet. And I will say in exact what the agreement was. She wanted me to try to, you know, save up money, get a car, and be able to have my shit together. You know what I'm saying? And so we agreed on that, and she goes, now remember, this is only temporary. And I said, I... Understand the terms of agreement. I understand where I'm at. So I said, yes, I don't plan on staying very long. I plan on leaving the first priority I get. And I did tell her when I moved in, I said, my plan was to save up at least about $1,500. So that way I got the first month's rent and then a security deposit for uh, this place called Air Haven. Well, that was the agreement. As time would go on, time would go on. I will I will say this. I did not save enough money for me to get all this into fruition, but nonetheless, I did save some money. I put some away. And anyways, so so the problem started beginning shortly after I moved in because she had about 4 or 500 dollars missing out of her bank account. Now, I did not take the money. I wouldn't have a reason to steal from this motherfucker, okay? I don't have any reasons to steal from people unless they fucking owed me the money, which Lisa, cunt A, does not owe me any any money. However, she, behind my back, was telling both Alec and her daughter-in-law, Jen, that, you know, she strongly suspects I did it. Which I never have her card ever. I've never touched her debit card. I don't know her debit card by heart. I don't know her numbers. I couldn't even guess what they were. But anyway, so she accused me. And and here's the problem I have with that. Not only did she accuse me, but she never talked to me about it. She never sat me down. Steven, did you take my card? Blah, 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 blah. Did you, you know? No, instead she speculated. I mean, it wasn't that bad. Like, I wasn't too, too offended. But like I said, you know, I was a um, new person living in her house. And the thing was, is at this point, she has known me for years. Like, I've at least interacted with her since probably around 2016, 2017, because that's when I met Alec. So anyways, then the second problem came up 
when, uh, again, she keeps saying shit behind my back. Like, I, I know another time she said she did not trust me around her son, Bryant, who just turned 13 not that long ago. She said she didn't trust me around him because she thought I would hurt him. Now, when I first heard that, I thought she meant, you know, like, rough house with him and, you know, like, you know, like, play wrestle and then maybe accidentally break his arm or something. No, it turns out she's worried that I would sexually fucking molest him. Okay? I don't know where the fuck people like her get the idea that I just want to sexually molest children, but I fucking don't. Okay? Children are not appealing to me. I am not, especially males and under the age of 18. That is disgusting. Okay, just because I was an entanglement with a an eighteen year old girl doesn't mean I want to fuck a thirteen year old boy. All right, so that's disgusting. But anyways, so again, she did not tell me that to my face. She said it behind my back. Then there was another time, uh, which was like a little bit time later. She accused me of she thought I had some plot against her where I wanted her, Alec, Jennifer, Bryant, and even the baby, Elias, which is Alec and Jennifer's kid. She ha- she thought I had this plot where I wanted them all to die. This is what either Alec or Jennifer told me. She thought I had this plot where I wanted one of them or some all of them to die in a fucking car accident so I can inherit the condo. I beg your fucking pardon? I don't want to fucking do that. First of all, I don't want you guys to die. Well, now as of recording this, I want Lisa to fucking kick rocks and fucking fuck off from eternity. But no, especially back then, like when we were actually cool with each other. No, I don't want her to. F- I didn't want her to fucking die. And I wasn't trying to inherit her fucking busted ass condo. By the way, that'll come up later. Um, Right after I moved in, I started becoming a giant fucking kiss ass. On average, this house likes to pile the fucking dishes, okay? And there are a lot of dishes that need to be washed because her dishwasher is fucking broken. Again, I told you this would come up, but it'll keep coming up more and more. I digress. So, I, like a fucking kiss ass, knocked out the dishes, like, either my first or second night living there because I simply wanted to just show her, like, I am capable of cleaning And I helped clean up the kitchen a little bit. I knocked out all the dishes. And here's the annoying thing. Just so everybody knows, I don't do dishes anymore. Unless I dirty my own dish. If I dirty a bowl or a spoon or something, I wash it out right away and I throw it right on the towel. So it dries off. But before, I was drying and washing everybody's dishes. Not complaining about that. What I was complaining about is when I would be in the middle of dish doing, people would be in the fucking kitchen coming up behind me, fucking brushing their backs against mine, brushing their asses against mine, their crotches, and it would make me uncomfortable. Lisa was a big proprietor of this. She was the big instigator of this. She would constantly be in there trying to reach around me, trying to grab stuff, and then I would have something sitting on the right side of the sink, and I'm not finished, and she would be like, hold on, let me see this bowl. She'd look at it, inspect it. Oh, well, Steven, there's a there's a mark right here or there's a there's a piece of dried up cereal right here. And I'm like, well, I'm I'm not finished washing the dishes. If I put it on the towel and it's not finished or if it's got food on it, yes, complain about it. But I'm not finished with my work, you know, and then I, I try to politely as much as I can be like, hey, can you guys like not be in the kitchen? I would just say shit like, you know, I, I work better when I'm by myself. And she wanted Alec and Jennifer To help me with dishes. I understand she wants me to do dishes. Or she wants me to have help. Because I wasn't the only one dirty in the dishes. But I'm claustrophobic. I would rather just knock them all out. By myself. Rather than just people. Rubbing their elbows against mine. And push, trying to push me out the way. Trying to get in my space. Because again I'm claustrophobic. And the kitchen's not big. So anyways. There's that. And then, like, she has this weird way that she wants everybody to place the dishes on the fucking dish towel and have it angled all fucking however she wants to. And it was, and it's annoying. Because if you angle it in the wrong way that she doesn't like, she gets all nitpicky about it. So, there's that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, 
she got mad at me one time because the first time she like really got mad as, as I'm memor- memorizing everything was we were down in the, in the in the living room and I had my iPad out and I was listening to Sugar by System of a Down. The volume was at a mid level, but I mean it was it was audible. But if you were upstairs in, in like one of the bedrooms with a door shut or even just, you know, cracked, you probably couldn't hear it. Like not even like at all. Actually, not even probably, but you most certainly would not be able to hear it. So anyways, um, I explained to Lisa not long after I moved in. I said, you know, if you guys, if anybody here has any kind of problem with me, any kind at all, whether it's big, little medium, it doesn't matter. If you got a problem with me and you really want to voice your opinion, please tell me because I'm a rational, strong-headed individual and I will try to solve things out. She didn't do that that day. So when I was playing the music, she was in the kitchen quietly bitching at her son about it, her son being Alec. And she's like, oh my God, He's in there playing that music. I don't want him. I don't want. I don't want a uh, uh, fucking uh, Brian to hear that. Da, 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 da. And Alec, I can. The only person I can really hear is Alec going, "Mom, he's not doing anything wrong. It's not even that bad." Blah 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 blah. And he's like, "Brian can't even hear that kind of music." And I, I knew right away. So I, I'm like, so then Alec starts saying something to me. He's like, "Hey man, do you mind shutting the music off?" And I said, "No." And I shut the music off. And she starts, like, spazzing a little bit. She's like, I just don't want my son to hear that music. And, I'm, and you know, I'm not trying to argue with her. And I'm like, okay, well, I turned the music off. That should have been the end of the exchange. But she wanted to milk it. And she was like, I don't want my son listening to that kind of music. Do you think that's the kind of music that's appropriate for children to listen to? And I said, yeah. She goes, okay, what are the lyrics to that song? So I started singing some of the lyrics, or I was, like, quoting it. And she goes... What band is that? I said, it's System of a Down. The song is called Sugar. And she was like, are they the guys that... She didn't even get the band right. She's like, do they sing Down With The Sickness? And do they have the music video with the skulls and the blood? And I was like, no. And she was confusing it with some other heavy metal band. She was confusing it for Disturbed. And I was like, no, that's not them. And she's just like, well, I I don't want my son listening to that. And I'm like, again, I'm not trying to argue. I said, okay, you know, and I'm backing off. I'm like, all right. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I was like, well, all right, well, I, I turned the music off and, and I think at one point I said, Brian's upstairs. He can't hear this. And she goes, well, he could come down in here. And I said, yeah, I would have turned it off. And the thing is, is like, she never was like calm about it. She never was polite. She never was like, sat me down like, Hey, Steven, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a bitch, but I just, You know, that's not the kind of music I want Bryant to listen to, blah, blah, blah. I would have been respectful and been like, okay, well, I'll shut the music off. I won't play that music around him. Simple as that. Fact of the matter is, she got mad at me over something I didn't even know was offensive. So I, I was like, okay, fine. Well, now I know not to play that. You know, you didn't have to fucking flip shit on me for it. You know what I'm saying? And I was respectable about it, you know. So then what else? Uh, let's see, um, I know she's also complained a lot about, like, my clothing, she doesn't like the fact that some of my shirts have holes in them, uh, and I'm not gonna lie, my belly tends to stick out from my shirt, I don't mean for it to, but, you know, it's a completely, you know, accidental thing, where my stomach will stick out, and, you know, instead of, you know, telling me, hey, Steven, please roll your shirt down, because I don't even know sometimes if my, sh- my belly is sticking out, She'll fucking go behind my back and complain to Jennifer or Alec or whoever and fucking just run her dick sucker. Like, uh, his shirt is hanging, his belly's hanging underneath his shirt. Uh, why is he wearing those socks again? And, uh, didn't he wear that shirt yesterday? Just always bitching about something I'm wearing. And then eventually, uh, I went downstairs and made that my living space. And... Oh, yeah, the Monster Energy fiasco. Okay, so, obviously, I drink Monster. That one's going to be an obvious. So, 
When I started sleeping downstairs, I had used her ironing board as a table. And I would set the iPad on it and I would watch YouTube videos and whatever. So anyways, the uh, I remember I had my monster downstairs. And it's it's one of those really big monsters with the twist caps. Well, I had that downstairs and I was watching YouTube videos and I had it sitting there. And then I came upstairs for something like the next morning and she was downstairs. That's another thing. She's downstairs a lot. Even when I'm on the phone, which I'll get to that here in a minute. She bolts upstairs and she's fucking like angry like, Steven, blah, 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 is this your monster can? And at first I thought she was going to bitch because I had, you know, drinks downstairs, which I, I would have understood. I'd be like, oh, yeah, my bad. I, I promise I won't do that again. I'm sorry. No, she was mad because she said that it spilled downstairs. And I'm like, spilled? She goes, yeah, on one of my boxes and it's all over the floor and it's all sticky down there and it smells like sugary sweet drinks. Something in my head said, okay, that's bullshit. Like, there's no way in hell that my I spilt my drink. Here's the first giveaway with that. First of all, I am fat and I chug all of my monster. I never leave it for later. So what I did was, is I went downstairs. First of all, the can was completely empty and not because it spilled everywhere. And I had the fucking thing sealed, even if it was full of monster. And I went down there, and I'm, like, looking where the monster was. And the ironing board was leaning up against uh, one of Brian's, like, toy box, like, box toys or whatever. Like, it is one of the boxes that has his action figures in it. And leaning up against it was, like, a wet spot, okay? And she grabbed the monster and placed it up against it. She goes, see, that looks like it fits. No. First of all, that wet spot... Okay, you know, you ever had, like, seen cardboard that had a wet spot on it at one point, but some time had passed, and now the wet spot is, like, dry, but the, the box itself is warped? Yeah, that was there before I put my monster there, okay? And I don't even think my monster was there. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely not from my monster can. That looks like an ironing board. Or, look, not an ironing board, but it looks like an iron like, you know, the top of the iron where it's got that point going on? It looks like someone leaned the iron against it whilst it was wet or something. And that's what fucking happened. And then I went feeling around. Everything down there was bone dry. And she said that, like, the spill went down into the toys. And I started touching all the toys. One of them was, like, this Amish-built toy thingy where, like, like, it looks like a snake or whatever. So I started touching around, and I'm like, it's not, it's not even sticky. Okay, this was within the last 24 hours, and trust me, that shit would have been sticking, and she was, like, smelling it. She goes, you don't think that smells sweet? So Alec was down there at this point. I smelled it. I said, no, it doesn't smell like anything, and then he smelled it. He goes, it doesn't smell like anything. She goes, I swear it smells sweet. It smells sweet, and I'm like, no, it doesn't. Now I know she's fucking lying. Instead of, you know, like, I, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she was mistaken. Like, no, no. You know, it may seem like that I spilt the monster down here, but I probably... No, in my head, instead of arguing with her, in my head, I'm like, you're full of shit. Okay, this was a fuck... This is not even... This is not even a mistaken case of, like... A case of, like, mistaken mishaps. No, you're full of shit. You're just lying to make me feel bad. You know? And then and then I quit being apologetic. I was like, no, nah, I'm not fucking... I'm not about to apologize for this shit. So... I'm really trying to think about some more examples before I bring up this one, but um, but since I can't really think of anything right now, and we're already at like 19 minutes and 11 seconds, I think I'm going to finally bring up like the last month living here. Um, by the way, as of today, I got two more days and then I'm out of this motherfucker. So, okay, I'll bring up this story. So, my cousin, David... He asked me if I want to come to with him to uh, Memphis, Tennessee on May 22nd because uh, that's when he's going. So basically, my cousin and I, we both work for a company called DHL. And David's like, hey, man, uh, there's a, a building opening up in Memphis, Tennessee, and they're going to need a lot of hands on deck for that job. 
do you want to just come with me and, you know, we can share a hotel or something or you can get your own hotel and you can um, carpool with me and, you know, and, you know, we were talking all this, these plans and I'm like, hell yeah. So anyways, so I tell her about it. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be gone uh, on the 22nd. And then when I uh, come back to Columbus, Ohio, I'm going to be moved out of your place. And she was at like I noticed when she asked me questions, she likes to ask me like a billion questions. And I'm getting the vibe from her that she's only asking the questions because she simply does not believe me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you feel like someone's lying to you, so you just ask them, like, a fucking plethora of questions. That's exactly what I felt like was going on with her. And she's like, so what are you doing in Memphis? And I'm like, oh, we're just, you know, I'm going to be a driver there, and I'm going to help out the building. He goes, she's like, oh, is that the cousin you're moving in with? And I said, no, that's a different person. So I told her, and she, she we sat down before the Memphis talk. She was like, so, Stephen, I did, I did tell you that uh, I wanted you out of here, um, here soon because it was only temporary. I said, yeah, I know. And I appreciate it. And then she said something to the degree of like, she thinks I'm taking her for granted and taking advantage of her. And she's like, well, you haven't really saved up much money since you've been here, blah, 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 blah. And at the time I'm like, you know, I'm calm about it, but I'm not like backing down. I was like, I'm not taking you for granted. I'm not taking advantage of you. Like, I appreciate staying here and I, you know, thank you so much and blah, 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 blah. And you know, and I'm like, and I help out when I can, and yada, yada, yada. Well, anyways, um, ah, shit, sorry, I'm having a brain fart here. So, anyways, then, okay, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm trying to think about when things start getting, like, really bad. Hold on a second. Okay, so, I just thought of it. Um... So then she's asking me about when I'm going to be moving out. And I told her that uh, I hadn't really found a place to go. And that the two options I had was a buddy of mine named Anthony and my cousin Anthony. And I told her that one of those two people. So I told her that, you know, I hit Anthony up, my, my friend Anthony. And he said that he had a place for me to go. And I was like, all right, cool. He's like, yeah, you can crash in uh, the basement for a little bit. Because somebody had just moved out. We're just moving his stuff out. And I kept up the day with her as much as we could. And she kept asking, like, quite frequently, like, so when are you moving out? When are you moving out? And she's just all the fucking night. Every time she, so when are you moving out? When are you move? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just letting you know. And then at one point, she's like, I don't really think you're going to be moving out of here here soon. I think you want to stay a little bit longer. And I said, I promise you, I'm not trying to stay any longer than necessary. Like, she goes, why can't you move in with your friend Anthony now? And I said, because he's not ready for me. I said, I got fucking, you know, he's got to do what he's got to do. And then I said, and, and she goes, and what if he doesn't let you move in? I said, okay, then I'll go somewhere else. You know, and, I mean, I'll, I'll figure it out, I promise. And, you know, I was going back and forth on that thing. And then, you know, I told her, you know, my cousin Anthony, you know, had a place for me to stay. Because I asked him, you know, because of, you know, everything that's going down. And Anthony said that, you know, hey, I got an uncle that just moved out. You can have his room. And then I told her about that. And I said, you know, I, so I finally explained it to her. This all ties back to Tennessee. And I said, so here's my plan. I am going to be moving around the 22nd of May. And I told this to her back in like April. I said, I'm going to be moving on the 22nd of May, which is, I believe, a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And I said, and I explained it to her that uh, I would be leaving. That's when I'm leaving for Tennessee. And then when I come back, I'm going to be moved out and not live with them anymore. And apparently she had forgotten about that because then she asked not long after that. She goes, okay, so when are you moving? And like a couple of weekends ago, she asked me uh, when I was leaving. And I said, um... If it's possible, I said, I'll try to move out next weekend, uh, which was, sorry, give me a second. I know this fucking audio is like hella long. We're almost 25 minutes in. So the first week of May, like May 3rd, 4th, I told her, I said, there's a possibility if I ask my cousin Anthony, 
he could probably let me move in on either the 10th or the 11th. But I explained it to her. I said, but I have to ask him if he's got that room ready for me. So she's like, okay. And then, of course, she's all like, okay. I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if I entirely believe that, but all right. You know, just, you know, being a bitch. And I'm just like trying to ignore her. Well, before the before this happened, finally, I'm going to get to this really juicy part where we finally started to butt heads. So, uh, the last weekend of April, I believe it was, the 27th, 28th, whatever, or it might have been the week before that, um, it was sometime in April, but Alec picked me up from work, and me, Alec, and his wife went to go pick up his brother from school, and I don't want to throw Alec under the bus here, but I did ask Alec, I said, hey man, before you go get Bryant, can you, like, drop me off at the house? He goes, are you sure, man? He's like, you sure you don't want to just tag along? I said, all right, fine, I'll tag along. So we go to get his brother from school, and we pick his brother up, and we start to drive home. And Alec uh, looked over at Brian, he's talking, and he, and he rolled the window down, and he goes, hey, bub, do you have to poop? So there was this joke that I did, and it started with uh, my friend's Dan and Kaylee, where uh, years and years ago, there was a, um, there was me, me and my buddy Dan and his wife and his two kids, um, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Oh, so anyways, we were driving around and I would have the windows rolled down and I would scream out the window or scream, but with, with people hearing me. I'd be like, Dan, Kaylee, can you drive faster? I got to poop. Oh, my God, hurry up. I can feel the poop coming out. I'm clenching my butt cheeks. So I did that with uh, with Bryant in the car, and Bryant was laughing about it. He thought it was funny. Everybody in the car thought it was funny because there was people looking at us, and I'm like, dude, hurry up. Go. I'll, I'll pay for your speeding ticket. Run this red light. I just I got a dookie so bad, and I would pretend like I'm crying. And then I pretend like I pooped myself. So then, um, and then there was another time, or yeah, a, just a couple minutes later, where I was pretending like I was on the phone, and I was yelling obscene stuff to an imaginary girlfriend, like, I'm kicking you out of the house. You and my uncle were kissing each other, and then you kissed the dog. I didn't know you were down for that. You know, just just joking around. Well, anyways, some time goes by. And then I started noticing that Lisa was being, like, really aggressive with me. I don't understand what happened. But then Lisa came down and she confronted me when I was down in the basement. And she goes, Steven, I just want to tell you right now how disappointed I am with you. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just, like, confused. And she says, the new rules with my car is that you are not to be in my car without me in it. And I don't owe you any explanations that's just gonna be the new rules i said okay that's fine and for a while i didn't understand what she meant by that and because i genuinely didn't know that you know what i did was a problem but apparently when i did that little joke with um with bryant where i was pretending like i was gonna poop on myself apparently she had a problem with that and she thought it was like vulgar and inappropriate and then when I found out, oh, before before she finally told me about that thing, so it was the weekend of her son's uh, birthday party, of uh, Brian's birthday party. And she's like, I need you out of the week, and out of the house for the weekend because I'm throwing a birthday party and I just don't want you there. And I'm like, okay, it's whatever. So I asked my buddy Dan, I'm like, hey, man, can I spend the weekend with you guys so that way, you know, they can have this birthday party and shit. And he said, sure, let me ask the wife, blah, 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 blah. So we had it all lined up. Well, the day, well, a day before I was supposed to go hang out with him, uh, I hit up his wife like, hey, uh, it's my understanding that you guys are going to be uh, having me over this weekend, right? And she goes, oh, we got to take a rain check. Dan, uh, Dan got sick and he had vertigo or whatever the fuck going on. They thought they had a blood clot in his brain. So unfortunately, Dan was not able to let me hang out this weekend. 
I was like, motherfucker. And literally, I had nowhere to go, nowhere to crash. So I ended up, was like, fuck it. I'll just go book me a hotel for the night. So I went and got me a hotel. And then um, when I came back um, on Sunday, uh, Lisa came and got me from the Sheets gas station. And then uh, as she's driving me home, uh, we ended up getting back to the place. And so she finally flips out on me about the fucking situation. And she's like, I let you in the comfort of my home, blah, 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 blah. And you disrespect me this way. Blase, blase, blase. And that's just not cool, Steven. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like listening to her. And and then finally she was like, and, you know, you don't really apologize for it. You don't say you're sorry. You know, blah, blah, blah. In my head, I was like, well, <laughs> I'm not apologizing for it because you already have punished me for it. So now I can't be in your car without you in it. And you know what I'm saying? And then she changed it up a little bit recently. Now she's letting me in the car, but Bryant can't be in the car with her. So uh, anyways, fast forward a little bit of time. Um, she's always like interrupting me every time I'm on the phone. Like I'll be downstairs with my friend Dan and I'll be on the phone with him. And she'll come down and start doing laundry. And then she'll want to have a full-blown conversation with me. And me not wanting to be rude to her, I just sit there and listen and she'll just sit there and just fucking ramble for like five to ten minutes and just lecturing me and just giving me shit. Or she'll talk shit about Jennifer. Or she'll talk shit about Alec. Or she'll talk about something or her trip. To, like, regardless, she interrupts my conversation with my friend just so she can fucking talk. And I'm like, you know, if 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 I was to interrupt your conversation when you're on the phone, you would get mad at me. And I know why you do it. Because you see me as an inferior human being. You see me as lesser than you. You see me as a fucking child. And that's why you do the shit that you do to me. Because you s sincerely think that I'm a fucking kid that tells nothing but lies and bullshit. And that's why you're condescending. That's why you're a bitch. That's why you think that you're better than me because, you know... You you might have had a better life than I did. You're a lot cleaner than I am. Like, whatever. And you, and you think that just because you're holier than thou and you are a fucking proclaimed Christian that suddenly you are better than I am. absolutely fucking lutely not. Just because you believe in a fucking imaginary friend doesn't mean that you're better than me. It doesn't make me scum, okay? And I know that she's thought of me. She fucking called me a scoundrel recently behind my back to fucking Jen and Alec. Uh, but anyways, so... Oh, shit. Um, but no, she'll get downstairs and... And then she's always telling me she doesn't believe that I'm gonna leave. And I said, I was like, I promise, I'm, I'm leaving, you know? Like, and I even tried to convince her. I don't remember how. I said, I, I promise I'm leaving. I promise I'm leaving. You know, I said, you know, like, it's, it's, we got one more week and I promise I'm going to be out of here. And I've been trying to convince her and I've been trying to tell her. Well, she was like, um, misheard me and she goes, you're moving out this weekend, right? And I said, no, I, I thought we agreed next weekend. She goes, oh, well, I really kind of want you out this weekend, you know, because you did say. And I was like, well, I said I was moving out before Tennessee. And, you know, I didn't want to argue with her and I didn't want to be, you know, confrontational just because, like, I just, that's just not who I am. Like, even if I'm right in this situation, the other person's clearly wrong, I just sincerely don't want to fucking argue. You know, I would rather them think that they are right and just go on with their day than arguing with them despite the outcome. So I'm in that mind space. Well, anyways, so then there's, uh, then the time comes and she's like, so where are you going this weekend? Because it was finally time for me to quote unquote leave when I kept explaining it to her that, you know, I wasn't supposed to be leaving that weekend. And I said, and she's like, oh, so you're moving out this weekend? And I said, yeah, I guess. And she goes, you said Anthony has a place for you next weekend, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, where are you going this weekend? And I said, I don't know. I said, I, I'll have to figure it out. And then she finally, she kind of like snapped on me a little bit. And she goes, okay, don't play me, Steven. 
Like, I need you to not lie to me. You are for sure leaving this Friday. And I said, yes, I promise. I, that's what I've been saying. She goes, okay, well, I just, I can't take you lying to me or some shit like that. And I just completely disregarded it. So then uh, a couple, you know, not not long after that, uh, um, I think I should mention shortly after that, um, her and Jennifer got into it really bad. It, I don't, I don't want to bring that up, but anyways, Jen had to be escorted out of the house and, you know, Lisa does not want her in the house anymore. She doesn't want Jen to be alone with Brian or anything like that. Like she's just, yeah. Anyways, so Tuesday morning, which as of recording, this was yesterday, which was May 14th. Um, I wake up super early and I have to potty. So I go upstairs and I use the restroom that's on the mid level. After I'm done, I start walking downstairs. I close the door. I'm walking downstairs and I fucking fall through halfway and I roll backwards and I grab the rail so I don't fucking hit my head. And, um, and I'm like, fuck, you know, it, my toe got cut up just a little bit. I mean, I'm fine, but my toe did get cut, unfortunately. I, there is little collateral damage. And I think I hurt my back just a tiny bit. I mean, I'm fine now, but... So I'm like, motherfucker. So I get up, and I'm trying to look at the fucking logistics of, like, what's going on with the steps. And I'm like, God damn it! I don't know what to do here. So I wait, like, a minute, and I'm like, motherfucker. I really, really, really need to fucking figure something out. So, I text both Alec and Lisa, and I'm like, okay, I gotta tell them the truth. You know, I wasn't gonna try to cover it up, I wasn't gonna try to hide it. So, I just simply was like, okay, I'm gonna tell them the truth. So, I text them both, and I said, hey guys, be careful coming down the basement. Um, one of the boards gave way when I can't, when I was coming up it. And I wait a while, it's been almost an hour maybe like 45 minutes or something like that. And I hear Lisa wake up and she's like in the shower and then she starts to come down to the basement and she goes, oh my God, seriously? And I was like, yeah, it's crazy or something like that. And she's like, Stephen, why didn't you tell anybody? Like, did you do this? And I said, yes, I did it. And she goes, why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you wake me or Alec up? And I was like, well, I, I text you guys. And then she's like, well, I didn't. See, I don't see my phone the first th thing I do when I wake up, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I'm sorry. And she was like, yeah, oh, my God. You didn't try to fix it? And I said, I, I, how? Like, what tools? And you know what I'm saying? So she just was like, whatever. Um, and she, then finally, after, like, a minute of bitching, she goes, are you okay? Did you get hurt? And I showed her my foot, and I showed her my toe was cut. And she's like, oh, are, are you in any pain? I said, uh, not really. I said, I'm a little shook up. And she's like, do you need to put some, like, Neosporin on it or something? And I said, yeah, I'll I'll clean it up here in, like, a minute. And then she's, like, wrestling around in the laundry room. Then she comes. She stops in front of me. I'm laying down on my phone, playing on my phone. She's like, I, I just, uh, like, she's, like, stuttering what she's about to say next. She goes, I, Steven, I don't know what to believe right now. I don't know if, and she, or she, before that, she was like, are you sure you fell through? And I was like, I'm positive. Like, the fucking proof is in the pudding. I didn't say it quite like that. But I was like, yeah, the, the, yes, I fell through. She goes, I just, I don't know what to believe. I don't know if you did it on purpose just so you can try to sue me. So I sat up and I'm like, excuse me? She goes, yeah, I just, I got a couple of thoughts. I don't know, maybe you did do that on accident or maybe you did it on purpose just so you could sue me for all this money. And I was like, that is, that's, that's a fucking stretch. That is so far-fetched. She goes, not really with how you been. And I was like, how the hell have I been? I was like, I'm not trying to sue you for shit. I didn't say for shit. I was like, oh, I'm not trying to sue you for anything. And I was like, what do you mean how I been? She's like, you just being disrespectful and lying to me. I said, what am I lying to you about? She goes, about you moving out, blah, blah, blah. I said, I told you when I was moving out. And I was, I was getting heated with her. I said, I told you when I was moving out, which was this 
I said, not this last weekend, but the weekend coming up. And I was like, and what am I lying, like, disrespectful? And she's like, about you and the Bryant thing. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, seriously, get over that. That was weeks ago, okay? And, and then I said, what about, uh, I said, what about you disrespecting me, accusing me of stealing $400, and then saying that I'm doing sexual stuff to your kid and my buddy's kid? Seriously? And the way you talk down to me all the time, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you constantly not believe in me? I said, no, you've been disrespectful to me. And then now you're saying that I did that. To, I'm, I said, that is that is a fucking stretch. Yeah, and then, um, yeah. So I finally, I just, I finally snapped on her. And honestly, like I said, I'm still staying with her. It's only Wednesday. I got two more days ago of avoiding this bitch, you know, and... I'll keep everybody up to date with another video, but Jesus fucking Christ. I am, like, sincerely done with this bitch. Like, you know, she's treating her son like shit. She treats her daughter-in-law like shit. She thinks that, like, she can control everybody. She legit, like, reminds me of my fucking father. Allegedly, she thinks, speaking of my father, she doesn't think that all the trauma that I went through as a kid was true. She thinks that I lied about all that and that I bullshitted about that. So yeah, there's uh there's that. But anyways, that's my update. This is um it's four thirty p.m. uh as of recording this. And what else? This has been a forty one minute video so far. Today is the fifteenth, I believe. And like I said, I'm moving out on the seventeenth. I just got to put up with her shit for one more day. And then Friday, whenever she comes home, or Friday, allegedly she's going to Indiana because she goes back and forth to Indiana. Allegedly, she's going to go there. And by, if she does, by the time she comes back, I'm going to be long gone. I'm going to be living with Anthony. And I swear to fucking God, from this moment forward, or from that Tuesday moment forward, if she says one more fucking thing to me, I'm going to let her ass have it. Fucking cunt. Oh, I can't fucking stand it. I just feel bad for Allie because he's got to deal with her. But actually, he's going to be out of the house here soon too. So fuck her. Seriously, fuck her. I'm done with her. And I'm going to make it my fucking point to where nobody ever fucking works with her ass or fucking moves in with her. Because she's a fucking bitch. And she's going to be in that house all by her fucking self taking care of that kid by herself. Yeah, fuck her.